Hello everyone and welcome to this video on preparing your home network for uh, the Cisco Unified Communications Manager uh, to integrate with the apps such as Unity Connection and I Am In Presence. Now I've done some previous videos on version 8.6 and with the different changes in the 11.5 I thought I would make this video to cover some of the additional stuff that needs to be done ahead of time before actually going through the install and configurations on the other ones including the LDAP integration, uh, DNS, and uh, some remote desktops. The, the remote desktops are optional um, but what I thought I would do this time is since I know many of you are trying to set up your own labs and follow along we'll go through some of the back-end stuff that I'm doing and I'll show you what I have set up for a lab so far. Um, it's evolving but uh, this is where I'm at right now and show you some of the uh, things that I use to get it going if you want to follow along but I'm also this is actually going to be a public available lab so everything that I'm doing in these videos uh, you'll have access to it if you want to use it just send me a message and I'll, I'll have another video to go uh, more into detail but uh, just to show you this is just a quick high level topology um, on how it's set up Basically, there's a, I set up a split tunnel VPN that you use Cisco AnyConnect with, and you'll have access to these two subnets, 192.168.2010 and 192.168.202.0. And in there, uh, there's a data side that has GNS3, viral, and different things, and I'll have other videos for those. But in this case, um, I'm focusing on the server that I have all the unified communication stuff. So we've got the uh, one publisher, one subscriber, for the Unified Communications Manager. Uh, we have a Unity Connection instance, the I Am In Presence instance, uh, MediaSense server, uh, as well as UCC, uh, Unified Com Contact Center Express uh, 11.5, and then uh, some uh, Windows servers for LDAP, DNS, uh, NTP, and remote desktops. And then there's also a, a Cisco 2811 it's actually the same one I used seven years ago in my CME videos uh, from back in the day when I was first doing my CCNA voice study. So it's the same one, same CUE module. Um, that's all I have. Um, but that ties in with another PPX to simulate calls and, and whatnot. So uh, again, this is available for you if you want to. Um, or you can follow along and build it out with, with me. So starting off probably one of the first things we want to make sure is you have an LDAP server. I'm using Active Directory. Um, you can use Windows 2003, 2008, 2012. I've tried them all. And, um, you know, just to, let me open one of these. Um, if you want me to do a full install um, on how to do this, uh, let me know. But it's really straightforward. So once you have either Windows uh, Server 2008 or 2012 installed, all you're going to do is go to the Add Roles here, and you'll do the Role Base, and uh, select this right here, the Active Directory Domain Services. When you select that, it's also going to install the DNS services as well. And then you give it a don't, uh, domain name. In this case, I'm calling this freelab.local because it's a free lab for all you guys. Um, once that's installed, then you have your uh, AD controller. So you can go to your active directories and users. And in this case, you'll start off like this. What I do is I right click and I just create a new. There we go. Um, organizational unit for the users that I'm using here. So in this case I just went to org organizational unit and I called it VoIP and it created this VoIP folder here. And I just double click on that and then I right click and say new user and uh, then I would just so like for example let's say YouTube user D and then the uh, username YouTube D hit next uh, give it a password and then I uncheck this and make it so the user cannot change password and it never expires so it's the same and finish and now you have your users and this is what we'll use 
with the LDAP integration to reference for the search uh, tree to find the users. Um, and that's pretty much it. And these I didn't change any um, groups. These are all part of the domain users. Then uh, with the DNS. Now in most cases I'm removing DNS uh, reliance on everything, but just so we have it on the forwarding lookup zones, uh, you create the freelab.local, and then here, these are the different names that I created with the respective IP addresses of the individual devices, and uh, I also was using uh, this for NTP, but I actually ended up installing a CSR 1000V. Main reason was is when I was using Windows Server 2008, it's using NTP version 3. So even though when you install uh, Communication Manager and it syncs no problem, well, sort of, it'll sync as far as the install goes, but then when you try to add a subscriber, it'll say it's out of sync and come to find that even though um, NTP version 4 is backwards compatible with version 3, uh, the Communications Manager uses version 4, and when it gets 3 as replies, it won't actually sync up. So then I was going to try setting it up in Windows Server 2012, and then I would have different issues because you have to have a stratum of 6 or lower, and I was getting stratums of like 8, and you know, I'm not an NTP expert in Microsoft by any means, so what I ended up d doing is just installing this I, uh, CSR 1000V is a virtual instance of a router and just turned on uh, NTP here so this all I d did is uh, gave the um, an interface and IP address and oops and just set uh, the NT master of 3 so it's a stratum 3 and then set the peer to Windows uh, 2012, and so that way, if, uh, or show NTP status. Um, so now you can see it's a Stratum 3 reference, and so now when you use this, when you do your installs of the uh, different appliances, you won't run into that issue when you go to add a subscriber. Now, as far as the hosts go, I set up remote desktop, so, um, and I'll be using this in a lot of the examples. This is something you can also use um, remotely, just use remote desktop to get to it. But um, I have IP communicator that you can set up as endpoint as well as Cisco Jabber. And then when you open up the uh, web browser, um, I'm going to have like some page on here that's going to have like a um, topology. But the main thing is then you can actually, um, I've got all the bookmarks, all the devices, so you can log in and uh, do all your. Uh, changes. But what I was going to say about that is in order for this to work, um, like if you take this one here for example, notice how it says uh, no audio output devices installed. The problem with that is then if you try to load IP communicator for example, it's not going to it's not going to let you and uh, bomb out So in order to get around that, what I do is log into um, the ESXi server, if that's what you're using. So go over to configuration and secure profile and under properties, we'll go down to SSH options and we'll start this and then use your favorite SSH program let's see find it here all right now one thing is if you go to uh, whichever data store that you're in so if you hit ls you get all your directories in this case uh, if we go back over here this host 3 is the one that is that, uh, let's see, no, it's host 2 versus host 3.
closed it on accident. Okay. So in this case, uh, this is host three that has the audio issue. So if I do, let's see host three, uh, you'll see this one that has a little tilde on there. That's because the VM is actually running. So what we want to do is shut this down. Because uh, what will happen is if you we're going to edit the VMX file, and if you edit it the VMX while it's running, like this one here. Once you restart the VM, you'll it won't keep the changes. So now that we have this closed, you can see that uh, the VMX with the little tilde is gone. So now we can actually edit this file. And what we want to do is just look for where it has PCI reference of PCI numbers. So we'll just try to scroll through here. And so we got, see, 32. There's one. Um, let's see, are there any others? I don't think so. Because, uh, see, you can see 23, 24 goes up to 32. And I don't see any other ones. So. We'll press I, if you haven't used VI, I so you can edit. And then we're just, basically all I did was look at a VMX file from my VMware workstation hosts um, and to, to get the configuration. Uh, because, and just to show you, if we edit one of these, you can see how it has HD audio on here and on this one it does not. So that's what we're going to do is make it so that it will detect an audio driver which then we can install and make calls from IP communicator. So we're going to do sound.present equals true and sound.allow guest connection Oops. control equals false sound dot virtual dev equals HD audio sound dot file name equals minus one sound dot auto detect equals true and sound dot PCI slot number is one that's not in use so I think it's safe to use 33 because 32 here so, oh, sorry I didn't realize the I was off the screen there um, I don't see any other one so I'm gonna say 33 then we'll escape write and quit and then we can exit out. Um, now at this point if I power on the VM it will detect the audio driver but it still won't actually show up in here so in order to do that we can just quickly remove uh, this from inventory. Are you sure? Yes. And then we'll go back to the data store under host 3, find the VMX file and add it back into inventory just next next finish just add it back in there and now when you view the edit settings now you can see it has HD audio on there so we'll go ahead and power this back on so then we'll log back in and I'll have this set up to automatically log in I just haven't set them all up the same just yet. But now you can see that there's no error. It shows speaker volume. And then if we try to open the IP communicator, now we have our high definition sound device.
I'll be turning off the firewall altogether on these as well. Test, test, test. So then when you configure this, um, it'll work and then you can make calls and everything. So now these are pretty much the additional steps that are going to be done prior to the integration videos. So in the next videos, um, with this already set up, we'll go through it. But again, I just wanted to show you in case you're following along what I did to set that up. And if you want to follow along, and then again, just let me know if you're interested in using this exact lab, and I'll uh, give you the information how to access it. So uh, thanks uh, for watching, and I will see you in the next video.